there for science communication, blogging or social media? Hey there, I'm Dr. Stephanie Shetler, AKA the Fancy Scientist, and my goal is to empower scientists and inspire you to conserve our natural world. Today we're gonna to be talking about science communication, blogging and social media. I got this question from Natasha. She wanted to know how I do both and if I prioritize one or the over the other. So today I'm gonna to tackle the second question, which one I prioritize and why. So the short answer is I prioritize blogging and I'll go through five different reasons why I prioritize blogging. But first, let's talk about what we mean with blogging and what we mean with social media. So blogging traditionally started kind of like an online diary, and this is true for scientists too. So scientists would write about a day in the life at, at the field or in their uh, bench if they worked at a laboratory. So it, it had a more personalized daily component to it. Whereas blogging nowadays, I think about it more as just having your own website. When I write blog posts, I'm not necessarily writing about what I do for the day, although I do write some posts um, that involve my daily and even my more personal life, but I'm writing more about content. So I'm writing about like topics I want to write about. And in that way, I see having a blog as having a website and I kind of view my blog as like a magazine almost. And when you think about all the information that's out there on the internet and how people find information, they use Google. And that is why I prefer blogging because so many people can find your blog, AKA website using Google. When I talk about social media, I mean, um, mostly Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, the, the things I'm gonna talk about today are a little bit less true for YouTube and Pinterest because YouTube and Pinterest are better search engines. They're more similar to Google um, than they are to other social media platforms. So I prioritize blogging and there are five major reasons why I prioritize blogging. First, the main reason why I prioritize blogging is because social media is fickle, it can change. Um, so a couple of years ago, we ran the science communication workshop. Well, we had been running it for years and we used to incorporate something called Vine. And I don't know if you ever heard of it, but um, basically it was seven seconds of video and it was on this app that you could watch. So it's sort of like a really short YouTube. And there are people who became famous from Vine. They were, you know, huge. They had millions of followers, but guess what? Vine shut down. Vine is no longer in existence. So if you have all your followers on one platform and it goes kaput, well, those followers follow you to a new platform. That's the risk with social media. And I know with me and the people I follow on Instagram, even if I love their accounts, sometimes I just can't remember their names. When you collect emails for your newsletter, you have control over your audience. You don't have to worry about platforms changing. Another thing is I'm seeing a lot of people complain about Instagram algorithms changing. So people who had big Instagram accounts are not seeing any growth on those accounts. They are noticing that followers who follow them are not even seeing their posts. So again, this is why I prefer Google. And if Google does change its algorithm, it definitely does, um, you can change your blog content to match the new algorithm. So you have more control over your content. You own it, whereas with social media, you don't. The second reason why I prefer blogging over social media has to do with what I mentioned in the beginning, that you can be found easier in Google than you can through social media. Social media like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they're not really search engines. Yes, you can search for hashtags and you can search for words, but it's it's not as specific and when you search for it, it's not as separated. So the most popular posts will rise to the top. Um, you can do it by time in Twitter and Instagram, so the most recent posts rise to the top, but it's still kind of a cluttered arena um, and people might not be choosing the best hashtags to go with their content. Oh look, I have Bonnie here. Um, so we have a kitty visitor. It's just kind of, um, it's just harder to find you. In Google, you control how you are being found and if you choose, okay, I'm gonna put her away. In Google, 
you choose how you can be found. So you can change your blog to be better found uh, by Google. So if you choose keywords that have low competition, meaning the market is not very saturated for that keyword, you have a really good chance of being discovered. So if somebody, we have Bonnie again. <laughs> Bonnie, stay away, we're doing a YouTube video. <laughs> so where was I? Okay. <clears throat> So if you choose keywords that are not very competitive, you can actually get to the top of Google search results. So if you're, and if you're in a field that maybe there's a lot of scientific misconceptions about it, um, you can create content that combats um, other content out there that is less or not scientifically vigorous at all. And yes, Google algorithms change just like social media platform algorithms change, but again, you have control over your blog. So you can update your blog posts at any time and you can change your blog post to make it more competitive so that it's more easily found by people. The third reason, again, has to do with being found. And this has to do with the fact that Blogging is more like evergreen content where social media expires. So what is evergreen content? Evergreen content basically means content that lasts all year round. If you think about evergreen trees, they are green all year round. And although there can be some seasonal blogging topics, like if you're talking about the holidays or summer vacation or something like that, yes, it's gonna be searched more during those seasons, but overall, the topics are still relevant. You could be blogging about a conference though, and it could be very timely or a news event, but you can still update and change your blog post over time to be more general. Anyway, I digress. Social media, the way it works is you tweet, you make a Facebook post, you do an Instagram post, and then with time, it gets buried to the end of your feed. So I, for Mammal of the Day on my Instagram, I would do these amazing, not to toot my own horn, accounts of, of mammal profiles, and I would spend time creating them, uh, talking about different mammal facts, and then over time, they got buried to the bottom of my feed. So that's why I started blogging, because I was doing Doing all this work and I wanted these interesting facts to reach more people and for more people to see these cool camera trap photos. So I mean think about how often when you go to somebody's Instagram feed or if you look at who likes your content, are they going down to the bottom of your feed? Probably not and I've been doing Instagram for a while, I have over a thousand posts so that's a lot of content to look through. But blogging, again, um, people will subscribe to your newsletter, they will pay attention to what's out with Twitter and what's new, but in general, um, they're gonna find you through Google. So they're gonna be searching topics. And the great part about blogging is that your content gets better with time. So Google takes, um, I believe, months it takes, takes to rank your, your blog posts in those keyword searches. And if you um, set up your blog post well, with a good number of words, quality content, people are clicking on it, low competition, then with time, your blog post can do better in Google. So I love spending my time on things that will last longer, and that is a big reason why I choose blogging over social media. I'm gonna frame that. I choose blogging over social media, but I do them both, and both are important. Hey, Mio. Okay, the fourth reason why I like blogging over social media is because it is easier to share content. Oh my God, I have another cat. <laughs> I have four cats actually. That's a crazy fact you probably didn't know about me. Um, so with blogging, um, if you write up a blog post and somebody asks you a question, you can just refer them to the blog post rather than having the whole discussion over and over again. Um, so for example, I get asked a lot of times about what kinds of camera traps that I use and what people should buy. So I made up a blog post all about Reconyx camera traps, my favorite brand. I put a bunch of photos in there comparing it to other camera trap brands so people could really see the value and included the links to the different products. And um, this saves me a lot of time and it provides a more quality answer to the people because I took the time to really create a, a message, an argument, um, to really show them the value of these camera traps and, and why I think that they should invest more money in it. Um, to and why I think they should invest more money into getting a better camera trap, but um, I also provide them with alternatives as well. Okay guys, this is my little Leo sitting here. He's driving me nuts. This is kitty number two. One more, he was over there, but now he left. 
And then I don't know where the fourth one is. Okay. The fifth reason why I love blogging is you can also make money from it. And scientists, a lot of scientists make a lot of money, but not conservation biologists, not wildlife biologists. Our field is not lucrative at all. And the people that I know that do science communication, they are doing it mostly for the sheer joy of it and because they really care. But our time is valuable and we're providing a service. So it is nice to get compensated for doing this work and for me, I love it so much, I'm thinking about turning it into a full-time career, in which case I gotta eat, I gotta pay my bills. So it's nice that you can actually turn social media, or it's nice that you can actually turn blogging into a lucrative career. I listen to a lot of blogging podcasts and there are people out there who make hundreds of thousands of dollars just from blogging. So one of the ways that you can do that is you can make products. So I am in the process of writing an ebook right now. It's all about my journey becoming a wildlife biologist and the lessons I've learned along the way dealing with the job market right now. So if you're interested in um, getting that ebook, make sure you go to fancyscientist.com to subscribe to my newsletter and you'll be up to date about when it's coming out. Another way is you can do affiliate products. So, um, for example, I have an Amazon storefront and I have different categories uh, where people can shop. I did this for um, field work, so I had a blog post and I have an Amazon um, store devoted to field work. So this is really helpful for new wildlife biologists who have never gone to the field before. And these are my favorite products and they're also um, crowdsourced from Twitter that other scientists highly recommended. So if you were to purchase from uh, one of those products, products from the Amazon store, I get a small commission and it is at no expense to you at all. Um, so that's another great reason why um, blogging is amazing. Yes, you can make social, yes, you can make money at social media as an influencer, um, but I do think it's a little bit harder. And again, you, you, these are not mutually exclusive. You can make money on social media as an influencer and you can do it through blogging as well. I personally think you need to have a website, AKA blog to be your landing page in case something happens to the social media platform that you are on, that you have your blog and you have control. Um, you have the original content on your website. So, I'm gonna close with saying that I think social media is so important. Um, if you know me, I'm the fancy scientist on social media. I love doing it. I love tweeting and I love Instagramming, so I'm not gonna give it up, but I mostly think that uh, we should use social media to promote blogs, which is um, my main source of science communication. So in the next one, we are gonna talk about how I balance my time with blogging and social media and life in general. So uh, please subscribe to the channel. If you wanna watch the next video, you'll automatically get in your mailbox. Thank you.